I jerked off to this one thing, and I'll talk about it, and then we'll get to the lower brow comedy. <laughs> I, uh, I, played, uh, I played San Francisco and San Diego back to back. San Diego, then San Francisco, which is bad routing. Because uh, I rarely do drugs anymore, uh, but there's a few cities on the road where, despite your best intentions, Drugs are going to get in your head. There's no denying it. It's going to happen. Uh, Austin, Texas, Portland, Oregon, every major city in South Florida, Montreal. There's places. You, and, and, and San Diego and San Francisco are drug cities. You don't book them back to back. You put a, a buffer town or two in between, a, a Bakersfield or a Fresno, somewhere you can just phone in some bullshit set and burn a bridge and fuck them. But I screwed up and I booked San Diego, San Francisco, back-to-back -back days, and I showed up in San Francisco after San Diego without sleep, bionic jaw, uh, paranoid, <laughs> sketchy, few hours to show time. <laughs> and I didn't even want to jerk off. I, I just wanted a nap. <laughs> Jerking off is not even something that... My dick and I have a relationship now like parents who stay together for the sake of the children. <laughs> it's just our own personal relationship is cold and distant and we don't make eye contact at breakfast. You do the pissing and I'll do the talking and we'll be dead soon and get this over with. I just wanted a nap. And I went to jerk off, and I realized I don't have my laptop. A and I went into a full-blown panic. I, how, do, how do you jerk off without the internet? I, I know I used to do it. <laughs> Most of my early jerking off career was pre-internet. I just don't know how to do it now. It's, it's like if I had to use a payphone. I, I used to, <laughs> but I'd be initially confused. It, do you take a visa? Do they still make coins? I, do you dial a one? I don't know. And then I thought, maybe they still have hotel porn, which they do. I don't know how you sell it in an internet age, but it was on the hotel TV. And I'm, I'm scrolling through the titles, and, and they're, they're the most weak, tepid, like soft core, sexy co-eds. Uh, what? Big Boob Bonanza. Is, is this starter porn for children? Who, who's jerking off to sexy co-eds? Title will not appear on your bill. I wish it would. <laughs> because the price is going to appear on the bill, and porn is the only thing that costs $17.99. All your Adam Sandler features and your Toy Story 9, $12.99, Porn $17.99, so the girl at the front desk will see $17.99 and look at me like I just jerked off to something deviant and repulsive, which is what I was looking for, but you did not provide, so I will still suffer the shit eye from the front desk having never committed the crime. Put the title on the bill. I want it in big red bold letters, big boob bonanza. So you suffer the shame having sold me this uh, low-rated garbage softcore porn for 18 bucks. <laughs> so I ended up jerking off for you to China the Wrestler. <laughs> China the Wrestler evidently went into the world of pornography for a short stint Sadly for all parties involved, uh, if you don't know China, it's a difficult pull. <laughs> She's this like, six-foot ripple-backed she-ogre. She's this <laughs> manatee woman with this Precambrian bone brow that juts out. She, she looks like Clay Matthews in a brunette wig. She's she looks she looks like Hellboy, like, like just sawed the horns off of her and plopped her on a mattress, not porn ready. She's uh, uh, 
she, she, it's like a, a, some abusive boyfriend talked her into doing pornography, but didn't tell her how. She's not waxed or tanned. She has uh, like just th these refried tit jobs. There's so many botched attempts at making her look feminine. It's just uh, mounds of scar tissue with <laughs> wall-eyed nipples looking the wrong way. And, and she, she's got fat pussy. <sighs> fat pussy is a condition that some women suffer from. If you have fat pussy, I'm not trying to shame you. <laughs> we all have a thing. Like I, I, get, I have anal toe. I have a, <laughs> my balls hang so drastically at this point that if I sit down the wrong way and my pants hike up, my balls are so close to my asshole that I get camel toe <laughs> around my asshole. Betty, I didn't know this until I saw it on television. That shit we sh shot for the BBC down. I had to see it on TV. No one in my camp <laughs> deemed it worthy to stop the taping and go cut and have me wedge my pants out of my anal toe. I had to see that. It's on YouTube. You can see it. So if you have fat pussy, I'm not trying to single you out. We all have an issue. It's just not porn friendly. It's not aesthetically. Fat pussy is... Because you're supposed to have a couple of, uh, of layers down there. You get the, uh, you know, the junior varsity labia and then the, the big sister outer flap. And then some girls grow this unnatural third outer coating of fat pussy where it looks like a tortoise shell with a split in it. It, it looks like a retractable dome that can close down in case of predators or, or inclement weather. They sh it looks like a panini sandwich. It just <laughs> squished shut with nothing sh showing. It looks like a bee-stung Asian eye. <laughs> and that's not quality pornography. You want something... China has something hanging out because she has this giant nuclear steroid riddled clitoris that it juts out like a clam neck. It's, it, ha it looks like a ringed muscle neck and it almost looks like it's moving. I don't know if it's an optical illusion, but uh, uh, scary. It could put your eye out. Keep in mind, I'm still trying to jerk off to this movie. I need a fucking nap, man. I have an important show in San Francisco. How am I going to come to this atrocity? And I thought, I'll, I'll, I'll at least wait till she takes it in the ass. Because she has to take it in the ass. Because the name of the picture is Backdoor to China. There is a nonverbal agreement <laughs> in me purchasing this. If she does not take it in the ass, I'm not paying $17.99. <laughs> I'm a consumer, and I know my rights, and I'm not like you. I have no shame. I have no compunction about walking through a crowded lobby on a Sunday morning through a sea of Shriners and Girl Scouts to slap my hand on the counter and complain about the quality of pornography that was sold to me in my room. I've done it a hundred times if I've done it once. Just walk down there, excuse me, Miss Representative of the Marriott Chain of Hotels International, I rented one of your adult in-room selections last night. Last night's picture was uh, called Semi-Hard Truckers. Now, I couldn't help but notice that you edited out a lot of the jizz shots in the movie. I know this because I own the same movie at home on DVD. <laughs> I wanted to share it with my family here at Epcot Center, but for some reason you took out all the good spill takes. It's like tearing the last three pages out of Huckleberry Finn. How will my children ever know the realities? of the tractor trailer driver's life. You'll never get that far in the argument. You get to this first hand motion. 
complaining loudly, politely, but loudly. Sir, if you just lower your voice, we'll, we'll take that off your bill, please. Just Here's some coupons for the Sunday brunch, if you could just lower your voice. But I didn't have to do that, because China takes it in the ass. You have to wait till about the third scene. China takes it in the ass. She has her foot up on a piece of furniture, and she's leaning into it like, like a terrified Heisman trophy, f f fleeing an attack. China takes it in the ass so reticently China takes it in the ass like you would if taking it in the ass were sprung upon you. <laughs> you didn't know it's coming. You're, you're just whittling up some carrots for the julienne salad, whistling a song, and then all of a sudden, ooh, 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 ooh. She's looking around the room for comforting eye contact from a cameraman. And I came to that part. <laughs> not not because it was sexually appetizing on any level. I just waited to see the look in China's face where I was confident that she had just hit the lowest rock bottom golf divot point in her entire life and knew it. And I paused on that look. <laughs> and I eked out the most miserable, <laughs> schadenfreude load of bitterness. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even reach my knuckle hair. Just <laughs> <laughs> like a last squeeze in a tube of toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how do you like that, China? <laughs> <laughs> Suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's life, lady. <laughs> yeah, welcome to show business. I slept like an angel for at least an hour and a half and had a great show in the Bay Area. <laughs> this border happenstance with Bingo was right after one of our 4th of July parties back before we stopped doing that. It was a 4th of July party that somehow started on June 29th <laughs> and hammered through every day, and then we had to start a two-week Canadian tour leaving on the morning of the 5th of July. So we're fucked. We're just dead-eyed. Someone, probably one of you here, got us to the airport, <laughs> spilled into a plane, still wearing the same dumb shit we were wearing at the party. Bingo's in footy pajamas. I'm wearing this Navy Admiral's coat with a, a ruffled cowboyish tuxedo shirt, just still drunk on the plane. And when we fly, we eat downers for breakfast and Xanax plus Ambien and then Benadryls and top it off with the over-the-counter. And then you have to drink on the pills to make them really <laughs> kick in the plane. So I'm just trying to focus on not getting removed from the flight. Just bingo, don't talk to anyone. They can smell us, don't talk to anyone. Let's try to get there. That was our only focus. And Bingo, she's taking her regular crazy meds on top of the pills and the booze. And she sleeps like a spastic monkey having nightmares and kicking around with her PJ footy pajamas. She'll jam her feet into the magazine rack in the seat back in front of her and kick around and pull the tray table down and try to sleep on it like a kid at school. And then jar and the guy in front of her is like, what the fuck? And I, I distance myself. Uh, what's with that crazy cunt? I don't know. It's not with me. I'm just a stinking drunk guy in a fucking weird <laughs> admiral's jacket. Anytime that you're on a plane obviously intoxicated and wearing any kind of dress that looks even vaguely like a pilot's uniform. People notice you. <laughs> and that's not with me. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So somehow we make it to Halifax, Nova Scotia. It's a 14-hour travel day after a week-long 4th of July party. We get to Halifax. It's the last plane of the night. It's midnight. We're the last people off. Halifax Airport is this little yuppie airport. It's like that old sitcom Wings. Like fucking Tony Shalhoub is sitting there and no one else. And you fucking... And we're the last people off pulling our shit out of the overhead and it's dropping on our heads and shuffling through this empty airport. Last people, like, like uh, no one's going to notice us. <laughs> Bingo's got blue hair, footy pajamas. she got two neck pillows on. Her eye mask is on top of her head like Snoopy goggles. Her eyes are swollen shut like baby cunts. I got my ruffled shirt. We're just gonna shuffle through like we've been living at Burning Man for three years. No questions asked. So I got my customs form filled out and I give it to the lady. She just looks at us like, yeah, fucking right. She goes, you two need to be in this line over here. Which I'm thinking, oh, fucking Delta Diamond Medallion. These frequent flyer miles are paying off. I'm in the VIP line, honey. Now, now that's the uh, green mile dead man walking line to the rape room. Where, like, if you're going to profile people you don't want in your country, we're them. It's, I don't blame you. But they went through all of our shit like, down to unrolling socks. Like, they, they were so confident we must be doing something wrong to get us out of the country. That just all of our shit is laid out. I'm not worried. I don't have anything. I'm on so much Xanax that if I were wearing a suicide vest, <laughs> calm. Look through it. So they spread all of our shit out along these tables. And then the guy says, well, now we're going to swab your bag for narcotics. And they get that, the wand with the handy wipe. And they do this. And then they put it on the machine. And that machine starts making cartoon noises. And everybody races out. Like every customs agent, which is like five, it's fucking Halifax in the middle of the night, but they're all so excited. Like they finally caught Carlos the Jackal. They finally have a story from this boring graveyard shift job. And, I, uh, and the guy comes over, he goes, your bag just tested positive for narcotics. Good for the bag, I guess. I don't know what reaction I'm supposed to have here. You've been through all of our shit, and you know we don't have drugs, so is the bag in trouble? I, <laughs> do I have to get a new bag at this point? Do I need to hire counsel to represent my bag in a court of law? I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. Just stood there, and then this supervisory guy comes over, and he's... He's trying to do good cop, bad cop, but it's Canada. <laughs> so it's like good cop, gooder cop. And it, so he says, uh, he says, I'm going to level with you, buddy. Uh, we don't care about the users. We only care about the smugglers. So be honest with me. When's the last time you did cocaine? And I almost told him the truth. <laughs> Because they're so nice. I, th I thought maybe he's just angling for a bump. I'm going to stay up all night. There's no more flights till 7. Huh? I Help me out. Help me out, guy. The truth is, yeah, uh, the last time I did cocaine was about 15 hours prior. It's the only thing that got me from Bisbee to the Tucson airport. And all that day before. It was the 4th of July. Of course I did cocaine. <laughs> Fuck it. The, the parade's at 11. Fireworks aren't till 9. You get a day drink that whole time and stay awake? 
course I did cocaine. I'm a fucking patriot. <laughs> and I almost said as much as that to him, and then I caught myself because he's. I realize he's just trying to get me to admit that uh, it, it Canada. Th then it's at his discretion whether I get into the country, and his discretion was obviously leaning towards no. <laughs> so I caught myself. I which had to be the most awkward facial transition. Where, <laughs> when's the last time you did cocaine? Uh, never. <laughs> so then he gets mad and he says, well, if you haven't done cocaine, why would your bag be testing positive? And I said, look at the shitholes I work. You have my work permit. I'm not playing the fucking Mary Poppins Conservatory for the Arts. I'm playing shitholes. If you need a local reference, think Elmo's. Rock and roll, dirty shitholes where I belong. So you want to go to any of the places I'm playing on that work permit, Mr. Customs Guy, and shuffle through the men's room, walk through the toilet, and bring those shoes back and put them on your little Geiger counter and see what you test positive for. Fucking hepatitis C, ketamine, asbestos, ringworm, false positive on a pregnancy test, some of that weird poison shit they put on blow darts in the Amazon. You, you're going to test positive for a lot of stuff. And why are you testing my bag? Do you, do you think that's where I do drugs? In my bag? Honey, Tom Rhodes just showed up with an eight ball. Grab my soft-sided roller bag so we can <laughs> chop this shit up and get the party started. No, oh, fuck the mirror. This guy's a headliner. Get the Samsonite. Why are you testing my bag when you could be testing my nose? If you tested my nose, yeah, I just did blow to get started on this trip. I have such a dense thicket of nose hair. I've actually considered getting electrolysis inside my nose, so I stop wasting so many kind offers of bumps. Someone offers you a key bump and you snort it, and half of it falls straight back out into the carpet like you just broke a snow globe. You tested my nose right now. Yeah, I'd have some splaining to do, <laughs> customs guy. If it even tested positive, because with the shit quality blow that you get down here in Bisbee, if it tested positive, I would have to apologize for some bad Yelp reviews <laughs> that I've made about the local cocaine. <laughs> Bingo's gone on. I've done $300 worth of blow over five days in a a runner and got fatter. How does that happen? <laughs> what do you cut this stuff with? Pork sausage? What it? Is it fucking human growth hormones in this? What, what are you doing? Why would I be trying to smuggle that shit quality of drugs into Canada that has beautiful, copious, uncut amounts of drugs everywhere? It would be like smuggling ragu spaghetti sauce into Italy. <laughs> Fire up the pasta, guys. I barely made it through customs. It's a family-sized jar. <laughs> Point of this story is that we got fucked with because we're stupid. It was our own fault. Like we know we're crossing an international border, yet we show up like some freak act fuckheads, stinking and shining, and look at me. We have over 600,000 nonviolent drug offenders in American prisons, and I've defended them throughout my career. But the truth is, 97% at least, just dumb as fuck, <laughs> like that. It's your own fault on some level. If you're going to be of the drug world, of the criminal element at all, be a little discreet about it. 
Yeah, don't wave your dick around. Look at me, I'm a criminal. Don't advertise it. Don't show off. You're a weed guy. And it's a, it's a plant that grows out of the ground. It's natural. And yes, pot should be legal, but it's not in most places. So if you have pot on you a lot of the time, don't drive around in a 1968 Volkswagen bus <laughs> with hemp makes rope stickers and legalize and a pot leaf flag blown off the antenna because you might get fucked with, stupid. Be a little bit stealth. You're a biker guy, and you live to ride, and you ride to live, and everybody fucking hates your guts, and we all do a silent little golf clap anytime you get caught under a truck tire or kill each other in a Laughlin casino shootout. But if that's what you like to do, I'm not down in you. I'll never understand it. I don't understand anyone that would group up over a form of transportation. <laughs> it's almost as thin as race as a reason to become friends. I've had times in my life I had to take the bus. They weren't great days. But I had to take the bus, the city bus. We didn't group up over that. We didn't build a clubhouse, get a secret handshake wear similar outfits, get Bus Rider magazine, have a half-built bus sitting out on the front lawn. No, we stared at our shoes, get a transfer, and get to work. <laughs> but if that's what you like to do, biker guy, I'm not making fun of you. I'm just saying, if you have 20 pounds of methamphetamine in the saddlebag, maybe time to reconnoiter the whole plan. Maybe you should take the wife's Chevy Astro van with the baby seat today, leave the Harley in the garage, maybe put on a turtleneck to cover up the swastika tattoos on your neck, you stupid cunt. Or you might get fucked with. I think I would like to believe that if I were a drug kingpin, if I had little kids selling crack cocaine on street corners, I'd make them dress up like little Mormon kids in khaki shorts and a clip-on black tie and a big, thick stack of Jesus pamphlets in the <laughs> back pocket, visible from a distance. <laughs> so even if cops thought they might be dirty, they go, well, hang on, Raymond. Look at those pamphlets. If we're wrong, that's a long lecture to sit through. Maybe we just like, let them go. I like to believe that the Amish are the biggest underground organized criminal syndicate. <laughs> they just don't have big egos. They don't have to wave it in your face and they don't have to have their pants hanging off their ass. Just subtle about it. They wake up quietly in the morning. They take the donkey and cart out into town, drop off bales of hay at predestined locations with a little special package hidden in the middle for you. <laughs> and then they come home at night as dusk falls and they look both ways and then they crank open that barn door and it's all MTV cribs, flat screens, fat Latina girls bouncing their stinky asses up and down brass poles and they pull off their fake beards and they laugh their asses off because they're living an easy life, doing what they want to do, just not big show-offs. No, wait, that's not. <laughs> See, I'm just going to cram this in in case we use it. I did this on a bootleg once, but I love every time there's a major drug bust, they always headline the drug bust by the dollar amount or the weight of the product that they've seized. They should headline all those stories by the amount of fun <laughs> taken away. 13.1 million hours of sheer joy were seized by customs 
and incinerated in front of the weeping eye of the working man so he might not miss any more hours of production. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have a podcast, by the way, that uh, most of you have been a guest on. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we have a podcast like every other comedian, but other, uh, other comedians seem to have uh, sponsors where they actually make money from doing their podcast. We have never had a legitimate sponsor, which is kind of baffling to me with all the heartwarming content <laughs> that, we, that we put out from Floyd getting his asshole carved out from ass cancer to, to Chad Shank's litany of uh, brutal assaults he's committed to uh, Electric Dave and uh, Betty and your, your, your drug smuggling and prison stories and Joby, your sister's untimely gruesome death from liver failure and no sponsors not to mention Castle Rock Kenny's failed suicide attempt and the tragic results of uh, the uh, Whiskey Girl and Nowhere Man uh, cliffhanger podcast, and still, Stamps.com has not come rushing at us with a big check. I don't understand why. That's the problem with, with podcasting is, uh, like I could, there's only so many things, I could only sell a product that I use and my fans would want which is very limited. I, 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 if, you, if you're in Vegas and you need ecstasy, I know a guy, his name's Frank, but then you have to hang out with him. <laughs> he doesn't advertise. If, if you need 16-foot uh, steel palm trees handcrafted for your backyard, I know a guy, Shawnee, but he doesn't advertise either. <laughs> and all the people that do advertise on podcasts generally are all Shit that I don't use, my fans, LegalZoom.com. Do you have a will, people? My audience? Yes. Yeah, you know that nest egg you'll never have that <laughs> you would have left to the thing you aborted already? LegalZoom.com. <laughs> Fucking satellite radio is the worst. If you have satellite radio, all the sponsors are either scams or whores. Like all shit that used to be relegated to advertising in the back of comic books or smut magazines. Every third voice is, hi, I'm whore voice. <laughs> Do you have a boner, need a boner, want a place to put a boner? <laughs> Go to, Do you want to fuck someone's wife while they're at work? Go to fuckmywife.com and I'm whore voice. <laughs> Adamandeve.com. Do you want to spice up your love life? If you order right now from adamandeve.com, we're going to include a gift so naughty <laughs> we can't mention it on the air. <laughs> You're on Howard Stern, cunt. What can you not mention on the air? You just came out of a Howard Stern break where they had a, a regular guest, a recurring guest, whose fetish is to have chicks puke on his genitals. They had paid whores in the studio trying to make themselves vomit on Jeff Levy's cock and balls. And then you go to break and you have a gift so naughty. <laughs> we can't mention it on the air. Is it anthrax? What, <laughs> what is it? I'm curious. Is it heroin? If I order your wiggly gummy butt plug off your website, am I gonna get weapons grade uranium in the mail? I need to know. I need to know how much to tip my postman at Christmas. Cougarlife.com. Cougar, there's hot, horny cougars out there waiting for you right now. And you're still here. Who's buying the cougar bullshit? When did they take skanks off the shelf in a massive GM-style recall, bring them back to the plant, polish them up, rebrand them, and repackage them, and sell them back to us as MILFs? 
or cougars. No, you're skanks. I know you. I know a skank. I grew up with skanks. There's nothing wrong with skanks. They're nice people. You're not a fucking cougar. You're a beat up last call option at the bar. I wouldn't be where I am in my life today without the caring and decency of skanks who helped me up the ladder. But don't come back and high dollar me that you're some fucking milf with a pay site now. I knew you had kids before I ever had to sit with them at breakfast the next day. Just, just based on the dilation and the back queef of doggy style. I, I knew something big came out of there. And maybe more than one. I would have a hard time selling any of that bullshit on a podcast. So what I do instead, because I want a sponsor, I want to be like my peers, so I just say that I'm sponsored by shit that I like <laughs> that doesn't know they're sponsoring me. <laughs> Whatever. Sabra hummus. It's a good hummus. I know it's a corporate-owned Frito-Lay. At first, I thought it was some old lady named Sabra actually making this in her kitchen, and I thought I was doing a service. Now they're a Frito-Lay subsidiary, but I'm at an age where a good hummus is important to me. <laughs> Saks Underpants is a regular uh, sponsor, because uh, they're, they're men's underpants, but they I'll get, get you a pair. They fucking have a, a little cup to hold your balls up, like a, like a powdered baby's hand holding your balls <laughs> close to you. Saves you from anal toe. You know what, if I had Saks Underpants, there would be no anal toe all over YouTube of me. And there is no product that I can stand behind with more pride. No product more maligned and shit upon. No product more underrated than plastic jug vodka. <laughs> it's just as good as any top shelf shit. If, if you know anything about liquor, Whiskey, tequila, yes, huge difference between top and bottom shelf. Vodka, almost none. <laughs> almost none. So if you're out there at the bars and you're ordering a Grey Goose by name or a Ciroc, you're a chump. You're a mark on a carnival midway throwing <laughs> softballs into a milk jug to win a Bart Simpson doll, you fucking stooge. You're a victim of marketing, and you use a name brand in place of a personality. Plastic jug vodka is the same shit, and if any one of you wants to square off with me, deer hunter style, taste test, and you have your kettle one, and I have my plastic jug, and we're mixing them with Yoo-Hoo to make white trash Russians, if you can pick yours from mine, two out of three, it's dumb luck because it's the same shit. So Plastic Jug Vodka, our biggest sponsor on the podcast. This podcast brought to you by Plastic Jug Vodka. So after a, an eternity of saying that on the podcast, we thought, wouldn't it be funny if we actually got sponsored by Plastic Jug Vodka? We went with the pop-off, because it's the most well-known of the plastic jugs. <laughs> pop-off, nationally, you all have your own from wherever you're from, a Kamchatka, or a Vitali, or a Wolf Schmidt. They all come out of the same rusted water tank in Ghost Town, New Mexico, <laughs> with two old guys in sombreros watching the production and just pasting a different label on every fucking bottle. It's the same shit. We went with Popov, and we talked to Hennigan, because uh, Hennigan, my manager, before he was uh, in the Doug Stanhope business, his job was he was the international marketing director for McAllen Whiskey. So we go, Hennigan, he knows people in the business. Let's talk to him. Get us sponsored by Popov, Hennigan. That would be fucking funny. So Hennigan puts out some feelers and uh, people he knows in the business. And the word that we got back, the quote 
Popov vodka wouldn't touch Doug Stanhope with a barge pole. Not even the cliched 10 foot pole. They had to get poetic in how much they did not want me to talk positively for basically pro bono. I didn't even want money. I just wanted like the big banner that bands get Budweiser presents. I wanted a big banner, Papa Vodka presents, just for the errant person who walks in going, Papa Vodka? Honey, isn't that like homeless person vodka? And you go, yes, it is. Exactly. And I'm like a homeless person kind of comedian. It's the perfect pairing of brands. And you won't touch me with a, a barge pole? <laughs> Honestly, I didn't expect a lot out of this career. I never expected a... a, 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 a Emmy Award for a TV show I ruined or a, a Grammy for any dog shit album I put out. I'm, the fact that they, I can sell out my own funhouse for free <laughs> is overwhelming to me. And that you fake laugh. I like that. That's all I could ever expect. But I, I have been kicked in the balls a few times so hard in the last few years. It's almost, are you trying to shame me out of the industry? Drunk History is a show on Comedy Central, and I don't get a call for that, much less the first call for <laughs> Drunk History. There's only two comedians of any seniority, any tenure left in this business, and it's me and Ron White, and we're doing our own personal last comic standing to the death. And I don't get a call for drunk history, which is okay, because a friend of ours, Henry Phillips, you know, he did the show, and before you do it, you have to take a physical. And that's, no, that's where I draw <laughs> the line. If I'm gonna find out I have liver failure, it's not gonna be from some smirking Comedy Central executive. <laughs> uh, now we're even for the man show. <laughs> That's a small kick in the nads. The second one is a few years ago. Christopher Dorner was a true American hero. He was this LAPD cop who tried to out his department for the racist abuses that were going on, like Serpico, but he wasn't white like Serpico, so they just railroaded him and go, fuck you, you're fired. So he tried to remedy the situation going through channels, but channels don't work when the channel is the people that railroaded you. So he finally snapped and did what any decent American should do is go out and fucking kill a lot of LAPD and their families. <laughs> Maybe you never lived in LA. <laughs> if you had, you would have been cheering for this dude. It's not like Bisbee cops where they're cool and you can wave at them, they wave back, and then you see them at the deli department at Safeway and you go, hey, Yanis, and he goes, hey, Doug. No, <laughs> LAPD. So he went on the, if you remember, it was like a two-week on the lam killing cops, killed the fucking lieutenant's niece at her graduation, and, and they finally burned him out of a cabin up in Big Bear, Waco style, and, uh, and he left an eight-page manifesto and if you read it, first seven pages, very compelling story. You know, for you go, why is there not a donate here button, PayPal for more bullets? Because you sold me. Yeah, they fucked you strong, and they deserved this. Eighth page, the last page of the manifesto, kind of drifts off into weirdness and minutia, like the last several years of my act. He talks about music that he likes. This is this weird suicide note. Movies he enjoys. He enjoyed the Hangover movies, but hopes they don't go past three installments. Because they're funny, but not that funny. That's actually in his fucking manifesto. Last page of the manifesto, he mentions eight or nine stand-up comedians he's fond of. 
And that's the only reason I read it. Someone said, did you read the manifesto? He talks about all these comics he loves. I never expected a Grammy Award or an Emmy, <laughs> but I had goosebumps waiting <laughs> to read my name in the L.A. cop killing cop killers final words, and I got snubbed. I was snubbed. Ellen DeGeneres was named in the manifesto. I got jack shit. Comics I enjoy, uh, John Stewart, Jeffrey Ross, they're great comics, but is that what you're gonna listen to when you're gearing up to go murder the families of LAPD officers in cold blood? That's what's gonna put you in the mood? Is Margaret Cho? And I, Margaret Cho, I, she's a friend of mine. I call her Maggie. We're close. But that's not when you're putting bullets into a <laughs> cartridge and you're putting your flak jacket on, that's what's going to put you in the mood to murder people? Is Margaret Cho's impression of her Korean mother? <laughs> not unless you served in Korea and you're having flashbacks. You put me in the fucking iPod. That's what I've done this for 25 years for, is to inspire creative individuals like you, Christopher Dorner. And you left me off the list. And if that is not kicking the balls enough, when Papa Vodka tells you you're not good enough to promote our Garbage product. It's fucking $9.99 at Safeway and nine if you buy six at a time. And I always buy six because I'm an optimist that I'll be alive long enough to finish those six with me and my friends. It's repulsive. It's it's garbage. It's it's ulcer tonic. It's hobo plasma. It is a food stamp analgesic for a broken soul. That's why it comes in a plastic jug so homeless people can use it as a pillow when they're done drinking it and they're sleeping on the railroad tracks and they don't even feel their legs being removed by an early morning commuter. And I'm not good enough. The only advertising they have otherwise is spontaneous product placement in the trembling hand of a dying alcoholic guzzling it on an episode of Intervention. <laughs> and I'm not good enough. It's not even bottom shelf vodka. Some markets it comes from a lower shelf than even the bottom where you have to step on a button like Get Smart and a secret shelf rises from the sewer for the man on an even more discriminating budget. And I'm not good enough. So from now on, I am sponsored by Papa Vodka against their will. Every night, Every show, pop off vodka. All of my material retroactively was brought to you by pop off vodka. If you didn't like it, all the way from transvestite hookers and MySpace pedophiles and Doug Flutie's flipper baby and Sarah Palin's retard baby, if it offended you, pop off vodka brought that to you. I have my own banner now. I didn't need it from you, Pop-Off. We had a fan make us a banner. It travels with me. Pop-Off Vodka Presents. We have t-shirts. Pop-Off Vodka Presents. Doug Stanhope. We have stickers that say Pop-Off Vodka Presents. And when I die from drinking this swill, sure, it's just as good as the top shelf shit, but that's where they put the cancer is in the cheap shit to kill the poor. When I die from pop-off vodka, my headstone will read, pop-off vodka proudly buries the great Doug Stanhope.
And perhaps I will take this whole bit, couple it together with some drug and jerk off stories I never put on any other tape, and put it all out as a special called Pop Off Vodka Presents an Evening with Doug Stanhope. Oh, wait, I think we just did that. Thank you very much. Pop off for all my friends. Thank you.